Hi everyone, this is Mindy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In my video today, I am going to be using the new Better Press Letterpress from Spellbinders. Now, when I originally saw this, yes, you can do your letterpress designs, but I wanted to incorporate things that I really love, which is ink blending. So that is what I'm going to be doing today, sharing these techniques with you. Now, this is a little bit longer of a video than I would normally do, but that's because I was having so much fun experimenting and I wanted to share that journey with you. If you are not familiar with letterpress, it is essentially taking a design and pressing it into the cardstock. You can do this with or without ink. Spellbinders has lots of great informational videos detailing each product that is in the starter kit. They explain the paper, the ink, all of the components, the dyes, and why they are the way they are. I really wanted to focus on what I could do with it. So this is my unboxing when I received this from Spellbinders. I opened up the package and this is what you are going to get. You have a sampler pack of their cardstock. It is a specialty cardstock. We'll talk more about that later. There is an ink pad, a mini black ink pad, some best ever craft tape, and then you have your platform. Now they have very specific words for these. I probably will screw it up throughout the video, but I will try my best to have the proper terminology. So I opened everything up and you are getting the letterpress die. There's also two sentiments on there. You're getting a little booklet that is explaining everything that you're receiving in this starter kit. The starter kit really does contain everything you need to get started. All you need is a die cutting machine. I will be using the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. Included in this booklet are also some examples and they also have examples on their website as well, plus some additional products that I will be using today in the video. So now we have, I believe what they call this top piece is a plant plantain, um, I believe is what it's called. I removed that clear piece that was on top. Honestly, I'll probably just call it a plate. And then your bottom piece here, which I believe they call the chase. Honestly, here, I'll probably just call it my platform because those are the terms that I'm familiar with. There are three thin shims. Then you have this top piece with the grid on it. There's a little lip down at the bottom that helps you pick that up and you'll place your three thin shims in there. Now, the reason they have shims right now is because they do plan on coming out with thicker cardstock, which is where you would want to remove those shims. But for now, with the cardstock available, we do want to use those shims. So I place those underneath and our top plate here has four magnetic corners, which helps lift the plate off of that base until we're ready to run that through the die cut machine. For the inks, you are getting a black one that's inc included in the kit. There are other colors available. Also, I will be using in today's video. This is a special formulated ink that they have worked out with Ranger. Now, I haven't experiment experimented with other inks. That's something for another video. Right now, I am just using what's in the kit and what Spellbinders has recommended. Same thing with the cardstock. It is a special formulated cardstock that they found to work best for this letter press design. Once again, I'm gonna experiment more with other cardstocks. There was just way too much to try and experiment with in one video. So I'm limiting myself to one thing that I wanted to work on. But I will say this is a beautiful cardstock. And they do provide a nice sampling of it in the starter kit. Now, as far as the dies, these dies are once again kind of special formulated for doing letterpress techniques. From what I understand of watching the Spellbinders videos is you can use these dies to do glimmer hot foiling, but you cannot take your glimmer plates and use them in the letterpress. So it only goes one way. It's a one way street. I am excited to try glimmer fo hot foiling with these dies. Again, it's just something I need to do on another day. One thing I will say about these dies is I'm glad that they are a different color so that you can tell in your stash which are your better press plates and which ones are your die cutting and glimmer hot foil plates. When they say this is a foolproof system, it really is. I was honestly kind of intimidated at first. I don't know why. It's always scary doing something for the first time, but it really is easy. 
So the first thing I did is took one of their specialty cardstocks. I placed it within the A2 size grid lines and I'm holding that down with the best ever craft tape. You can tape it on the top and bottom like I did or up in the corners. Now this platform is magnetic. So when you place your die down, it really is kind of stuck there. You can move it around. You have some wiggle room. So I placed mine within the A2 size grid lines. This is the die or the plate from the starter kit. It has two different or it's two sentiments. The word favorite is just spelled differently. So I'm going to line up my sentiment using the grid lines on that platform. I love these grid lines. I wanted to test out really quick if my magnetic tool would pick that up. It does not. It is a pretty strong magnet. So once I have that in place, I'm going to place my plate on top. The four magnets in the top and bottom are going to attach. So what that does is it lifts that off of your paper or lifts it off of the platform until you're ready to run this through your machine. So I was just kind of testing that out. I removed the plate and now I'm going to ink up this plate. So this is once again the specialty ink from uh, Spellbinders and Ranger and I'm going to ink this up really well. From what I've seen they suggest a kind of a pounce and pivot. So I'm pressing down and just slightly pivoting my ink pad a little bit. Now when I am doing my inking I really do take my time. I go over it multiple times to make sure that I have really good coverage. Kind of one of the best tips that you can get out of this is that when you have your image inked up really well, that is when you're going to get the best results. Once I have the whole image covered with the ink and the sentiment, I'm taking my plate and I'm going to flip it over so that my paper is facing that die. Now it's connecting by those magnetic areas in the four corners. So once I have that in place, I'm going to run this through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. You do not want to press your plate down until the machine does it for you. And don't force the platform into the machine. Just let the rollers kind of catch it, guide it through, go slow, and you are going to get an amazing impression. I will do this a few times throughout the video. So once I run that through the machine, I'm being careful too when I remove this not to push down on that plate. But once I bring it over, I'm going to just carefully release those magnets and lift up my plate. And we have this absolutely gorgeous letterpress design in this black ink. Now, I have seen letterpress before. I don't think I've actually ever done it. I've seen them on invitations, things like that. And I was always super impressed and just kind of mesmerized by it. And this, I was excited to be able to do this myself so easily. The ink also dries quickly. So I can rub my finger over it. It has this beautiful feeling to it. It's something that when they say you have to just see it in person to believe it, it it's totally true because cameras just cannot catch how amazing this is. And to run your finger over it, the ink is dry. That is super impressive. So it's one of those things you just kind of want to sit and pet it because it feels so cool. So now one of the things I want to show you is cleaning your plates and your platinum are your chase, the platform. <laughs> I told you I would not get these words right. What you're going to need is the archival cleaner. Now they recommend the archival cleaner. It's not to say that other cleaners won't work. They have just said that this is what they found works best. So what you'll want to do is tap this all over your plate to clean it off. You don't want to drag this across the plate because you'll probably ruin the top of your um, dauber. And then you just wipe it away with a towel. Now, I did find that it was just a lot easier to clean my plate when you remove it from that platform. So I'm going to take those off and I'm going to rub down my platform here. It's probably never going to look as pristine as it was when it came out of the box. And after all my use that I did in this video, it, it does have some staining. So do expect some staining. But by using the archival cleaner, you can clean up kind of the main points of ink. One thing I will recommend is don't let the ink sit there. Um, I would recommend cleaning it off right away. Now for your plates, you don't have to clean them each time after use unless you plan on switching colors. But I'm just kind of one of those clean freaks when it comes to my dyes and stamps. So I do clean mine quite a bit. There are a few other products that go with the better press that Spellbinders has sent me. 
This is the always and forever. So this is a sentiment set. It has all the sentiments in one pass so you can do it all at once and also a coordinating die to die cut them out all at once. Another new product that I will be using today is the Pressed Bouquet. Gorgeous floral arrangement, no coordinating die, but this one is going to look beautiful as a centerpiece on the front of the card. Then we have the Butterfly Garden. So this one actually has three pieces to it. You can do all of them at once, or you can create the floral border around it. You can do the sentiment, or you can die cut out the butterfly and that sentiment separately. So there are a few coordinating dies that go with this set. Then we have the swirl birthday frame. So this has a beautiful swirl, obviously, going around the edge of your cardstock. This fits really well with an A2 size card front. And then it does have a coordinating die if you wanted to die cut out the sentiment in the center. There are a few other products available right now. I don't have those in my hand just yet, but they are definitely in my shopping cart. Now, this is a really great catalog that gives a lot of examples and shows you how each of these are used or can be used. When it comes to coloring in the image that you see here in the catalog, you need to be using uh, water-based inks. You cannot use alcohol markers in with it. So I actually have um, experimented a little bit doing my watercolors and coloring in some floral images that way. But they have different sizes of cardstocks or the papers to use with it. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I love that they released additional products other than what's in the starter kit just to give you a few other options and then I know there's going to be more fun things in the future. Now they do also have a variety of ink. I have a few of them here. There is another packet available as well that's also in my shopping cart. Now while you can letter press these designs and it makes a beautiful clean and simple card, I wanted to incorporate things that I like to do. And one of the things that I love to do is have ink blended backgrounds. So that is what I was experimenting with today. Now the inks that I'm going to be using are Distress Oxide inks. I didn't play around with every ink that I have. I just grabbed the oxides because I know that they blend super smooth on almost any cardstock. So that is what I went with today. I started with Picked Raspberry. Then I went into Dried Marigold. I have squeezed lemonade and you can see I'm just creating a rainbow going around the edge of my card and kind of having it fade off into white towards the center. Now this one is going to be twisted citron. I'll move into salvaged patina and a little bit of peacock feathers and then I'm going to finish it off with wilted violet. Now I'm also using my domed uh, foam applicators to do the blending. I was playing around with brushes a little bit, but I, I was kind of struggling a little bit with my blending brushes on this cardstock. So I just went to kind of my fail safe, which is the domed foamed blending tools. Once I have this panel ink blended, I'm gonna set it off on the side and I'm gonna do some more ink blending because I figured I already have all of my inks out. I'm just gonna get all of this done. So I have a, di a few different varieties. That sounded funny. I have a few options. So here I started with spun sugar and I went around the very edge. I'm going to come in with festive berries, which came in pretty hot and juicy. So I had to really dab off and blend between these two colors quite a bit to soften that down. And in full disclosure, I had experimented with doing the letterpress first and then ink blending over the top. And to me, it's a very similar to my Glimmer Hot Foil where I prefer the results of doing the better press or the glimmering on top of the blended panels. I feel like I dull things down when I add ink over the top of it. Now, while I had my inks out, I thought I would try a watercolor background. I have not done ink smushing in ages. So I took um, a picked raspberry distress oxide ink. I also have here the, I think this was the squeeze lemonade and then the peacock feathers because I know these colors are going to look good together once they kind of start uh, meshing with each other. And then I'm going to spray this with some water. Now this first background that I'm going to do, I sprayed my panel. This is the specialty cardstock from Spellbinders for the Better Press. So I sprayed that with water. So it's a wet on wet technique. I don't end up using this background, um, but I am going to save it because you just, you can't throw away a background like this. 
So I smushed that panel down into that mixture and it actually looks really good, but I hadn't done any ink smushing in a while. So I was kind of experimenting here a little bit more. I dried my panel with my heat tool and then I'm coming back in and I'm picking up some of those ink blotches that are still on that slick work surface that I have here. I got that one really big mark right in the center, which is what turned me off on the background, but I'm going to keep it. I'll dry it and set it off on the side and I'm going to work on another one. For the next background that I did, I used the same colors. The biggest difference on this one is I did not wet my cardstock first. So I smushed down those same three colors, the picked raspberry, the squeezed lemonade, and the peacock feathers. And this is a slick surface that actually comes off of the um, glass media mat from Tim Holtz. I really like doing my ink smushing on here because the ink beads up on it, whereas my glass mat, I don't quite have that effect. So here I'm just dragging my paper through that mixture and I really love how this came out. The pink didn't mix uh, quite as well as I had hoped, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to dab up a little bit of the excess ink, dry that with my heat tool, and I'm going to call this background good. One of the reasons I decided to try an ink smushed background is because they had said you could watercolor on it because you need to use water-based uh, colors to color in your image. So that is why I kind of went with an ink smushed background and created my own watercolor background. Now I have one more blended panel that I want to do. This is another kind of go-to color combination for me. I just wanted to have some panels ready and experiment. So for this one, I'm starting at the top with picked raspberry. I'm going to come in the center with that dried marigold, blend it up into the picked raspberry, and then finish it off down towards the bottom with the squeezed lemonade. So a very nice warm toned type of color. Now I can start doing all of my letter, letter pressing. So I'm starting with the butterfly garden plate. I place that onto the magnetic platform there. So the design is face up. I'm bringing in my rainbow panel and placing that face down. And I have loops of the best ever craft tape kind of placed on the back. Once I have that lined up, I'll bring my plate over, let the magnets catch in the corners, and then I'll just push down so that the tape catches the plate. That way my cardstock is perfectly lined up because you can see that that plate is just a little bit bigger than my cardstock. Now I'm going to ink it up with the black ink. Now you may also notice that these are mini ink cubes. Spellbinders does go into detail in one of their videos on why they wanted to go with a mini ink cube. I think this is great because honestly, they take up less room. I don't have to worry about finding space for a bigger ink pad. And I really don't see where I would need a bigger ink pad. I feel this is a great size for these type of designs. So I did that pounce and pivot to ink that up. I flipped my plate over so that my blended panel is facing that design. And then I'm going to run this through the Platinum 6 die cut machine, making sure not to press down on that plate until the machine does it. And then I just run that through slowly. So once I remove it, I can pull up the plate and I have this absolutely amazing border. I was really excited that these blending panels were working out for me. I don't know why they wouldn't, but it's just things that you want to try. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to set that off on the side and I'm going to work on a sentiment. So this is the sentiment from that butterfly garden. I placed it in that left hand side. You can see in your grid lines. Those are really helpful when it comes to lining things up. I placed that on the left hand side. So that way, when I placed my cardstock down, ran that through the Platinum 6 die cut machine, I have this sentiment on just the one side but I can ink this up again. I can flip my plate so that I can ink up the other side of my cardstock. So here I kind of lined it up to figure out where I was and then turned it so I can get that design on the other side of my cardstock. After everything is done, I will use the coordinating die to die cut these out. It was cutting it pretty close, but I did get it to work. So I will set that off on the side. I will be using this to finish off some of my cards. Now I have another technique that I wanted to try. For this, I'm going to use the pressed bouquet plate and I'm using this panel that I ink blended in those warm colors. So they have a couple different colors or 
quite a few different colors available and I wanted to try kind of an ombre look. So I started with wild berry here at the top. Now this was the first time I was trying this so I was a little nervous. I wasn't quite sure how to do this but it's also going to show you another fun thing you can do with this. So I placed my plate over the top ran this through and you're going to see that we transferred that wild berry ink. Now I had cleaned my plate, but you can see I do have some leftover black ink on there. That's fine. I'm going to come back in with saffron. And what's really cool is that you can, as long as you don't move anything, you can place your plate back over the top because of those magnets. Everything is going to be in the exact same place. So when I run it through again, remove it, now I have this two-tone flower. Even though there's that black kind of underlining color, totally fine. I think this came out super amazing. I cannot wait to try this technique with other colors. I think this is going to be so much fun. It's honestly easier than stamping because you don't have to apply the pressure. The machine is doing all the work. So I'm going to be turning this into a card. I decided to do another background here. Now this one I didn't end up turning into a card. I thought maybe I could get the saffron ink to look like heat embossing, gold heat embossing. That was my vision. It didn't quite turn out the way I wanted, but I'm leaving in some of my mistakes here. Now this is the swirl birthday frame. I placed that on that platform. I'm folding up tape in the corners so that I can place my plate over the top to pick up the cardstock. The cardstock is exactly where I need it to be. And then I can ink up that swirl design with the saffron ink. So this one, once again, you just kind of pounce and pivot, take your plate, flip it over so that your ink blending or your card panel is facing the design. Let the magnets catch, run that through your machine. And here when I remove it, so you can see the yellow, but it just wasn't quite what I was hoping. I was hoping it would stand out a little bit more. And I was like, well, maybe I'll just go in and I'll do black ink. I'm going to show you a close up here, but I was like, well, maybe I'll go in and do black ink instead. And for some reason, I thought it'd be smart of me to clean off my plate. That was not the move I should have done because I moved my plate which meant I couldn't get it back in that exact same position. So I set that off on the side. I'll figure out what to do with it later. One final background that I want to show you is how you can take your plates and put them in the corners to create a kind of full panel design of your own making. So this one I used Tawny Brown, which was another of the ink pad colors that they have available. This one has the watercolor background. I love that look of it coming in from the corner. I'm going to ink that up again with that same tawny brown. Now this time when I pick up the plate, I kind of figure out, okay, this is where I had it. I'm going to turn it, then flip it so I can get the other corner. I was a little nervous that maybe I placed it too close together. It does work out, but that was something that crossed my mind is that maybe I would overlap the designs. So here after I ran it through the machine and released the plate, I have these gorgeous floral images coming in from the corners. So and I really, really love how this turned out with that watercolor background. And then here, I just wanted to give you a quick look at my process when I was starting to put these cards together. I had also done the sentiments there in black and blue coloring just to have a variety. That was from the Always and Forever set. And here are my panels that I just started placing sentiments on to get an idea of how it's going to look, what I want to do. A lot of these look really great as a full panel card. Some of them, if I had ink smudges on them or just kind of wanted to uh, tame down the background a little bit, I went through and pulled out some of my essential collections. So this one, I have postage edge rectangles that I die cut that kind of ombre look for. And I love that postage stamp. So I'm going to be using that. And this was a panel I created off screen. I had an ink smudge off on that left hand side. So to cover that up, I'm going to bring in the essential essential arches, which I really love using arches dies. So I'm going to figure out about how much I want to show of the image. And I'm going to die cut the arch from white cardstock to create a frame. To save some time, I went through and finished off the cards off screen. 
Here I have that beautiful pressed bouquet and then the sentiment from the butterfly garden, which I popped up with some foam tape in the center of the card and used some embellishments off in the corners to just add some sparkle to that. This is my rainbow ink blended background. That one I added white splatters of paint to the background because I just had to add splatters somewhere in my cards. Once again, this is all from the butterfly garden die set. Then I have the one where I used the arches. So I die cut that arch from white cardstock, added foam tape behind it to pop it up, and then added that handmade for you sentiment using some foam tape to pop that up as well. This is the one where I die cut out that panel from the postage, postage edge rectangles. I added that kind of off to the left hand side and finished that off with the sweet friend sentiment. Some finishing thoughts that I want to leave you with is for one, I would not have done this video if I didn't love this process and technique. So is it another machine? Sort of. It's kind of in addition to your platinum six die cut machine is how I feel. It's not a whole other machine. This is definitely personal preference. You don't have to buy it. I think is a great addition. I think Spellbinders is going to be coming out with some amazing things that is going to make card making just the dies and everything super versatile so i do think it is worth it in my opinion and another thing is i love it not only because of the different techniques that you can do with this but it fits nicely in my drawer so it's not taking up a ton of space which is super beneficial for me so i hope you enjoyed today's video and me sharing some of these techniques with you whether you are interested in the better press or if you just want to use some of these techniques in your card making projects Either way, I hope you found this inspirational. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. I appreciate you spending time with me today for this longer video, and I will see you again real soon.